Welcome to Chatting with Camille, helping you share the gospel of Jesus Christ at church, home, and beyond. Let's chat about that second lesson in February that we're going to teach in Young Women's and Young Men's. It's all about judgment. Dun, dun, dun. A little scary, right? <laughs> But we're actually talking about the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6 and 7. And it's how the Savior's teachings can help us make righteous judgments. Excellent topic. And when we think about righteous judgment, we absolutely think it's a great thing. We don't want people judging us. We don't want people holding grudges against us. It makes sense. But then we think about the judgments we make and we might tend to think that they're absolutely correct and they're appropriate and they're needed and there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. But let's face it, a lot of the times our judgments are unrighteous and we need to fix them. As we approach this lesson, we definitely need to do so with humility to be able to learn and to teach and repent of any wrong judgments that we have been making and to strive to be better. Remember, as we go through this lesson, we want to pay attention to the impressions that we receive so then we can go and act. Idea number one is to grab some balled up socks. So if you have soft balls instead, that's fine, but we don't want them to hurt anybody. Hand one to each person in your class with a question taped on top. These questions I drew from Elder Dieter F. Uchtdorf's talk, The Merciful Obtain Mercy, which is all about making righteous judgment. It's from April 2012. And he has some great questions that we can ask ourselves to see if we need to improve, such as, am I holding a grudge against someone else? Do I gossip even if it's true? Do I purposefully exclude someone? Am I punishing another because of what they've done? Do I envy another? Do I wish to cause harm to someone? After you've passed out these socks, they've had a chance to read those questions and maybe think about them for a second. We're going to return to John chapter 8 and read about the woman who was caught in adultery. In verse 7, it says, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And that's where you're going to pause and you're going to invite your class. Those of you without sin, throw your socks. Now here you can have like a cup tower or a doll or whatever to represent where to throw the socks. The point is none of us are without sin. So nobody should be throwing a sock. Just like nobody in that story throws a stone and they all walk away. Finish reading that story. Continue to discuss it. Yes, she did something wrong, but how did Jesus judge and treat her? her. What can we learn? How can we apply what he did? We learn that we don't judge people. We judge the situations, the activities, the conversations, the ideas, the sins, right? But we don't actually judge the people, which leads us to point number two. If we don't judge people, then what about when we have to vote? What about when we have to choose political leaders? Can we look at their fruit. What are they voting for? What about our friends? We're supposed to surround ourselves with good friends. How can I not judge people if I'm supposed to judge who my friends are? Let's judge how we act around them. Are we keeping the commandments? Are we loving others or are we becoming snippy? Are we being tempted to do things that we shouldn't be doing? How are we acting around our friends will help us judge which friends we want to have in our lives. What are some situations and other things that might require righteous judgments? What are some questions that they might have? This is a great time to discuss them. How do we know if we're judging righteously? For example, when we use a search engine, we look at those top rankings, right? Right after we do our search and we usually click like a one, two or three, one, maybe we scroll down past the ads and then click, but we usually stay on the first page, right? We don't really go to page two or three, even though what's on page two or three could be better. We are usually not going to put in that time and effort to go and find those things. These days, we even have AI content, artificial intelligence, and AI is writing these articles for us. And they are programmed to put in all those keywords that those search engine robots look for. And so they can rank the AI content as one of those first three things, even though their answers may be completely wrong. So how are we supposed to know how to judge righteously when things like that are happening all around us? We need to have a righteous standard to measure things by. That is why we have to learn from Jesus. What are some righteous standards? Well, we have the commandments, but you know what else we have? We have this new For the Strength of Youth guide. This guidebook is teaching us exactly how to judge righteously. Read through a section together with your class and show how we can judge righteously because of these righteous standards that we have and that we hold dear to us. 
Point number three, we have a natural tendency to judge, right? How many homeless people have we walked by and instantly judged unrighteously? Or what about doing the hallways at school? What about when we go to Walmart? Have you ever been scrolling online through social media, etc., and you've clicked on a video because they had this great image in the beginning or a great hook that you saw and so you clicked on it and then they totally didn't deliver, <laughs> right? They didn't even show you what you wanted to see or tell you what you wanted to hear. It's so frustrating, but they know that you're gonna judge them within a split second and so they show whatever they think you're going to click on even if the rest of that video doesn't deliver on it right it's a first impulse and everybody knows it we have to train ourselves to think differently I was talking about judgment with Heidi in our last faith podcast story. And she runs a charity, often helping those that struggle, that are homeless and living in their cars, etc. They've lost their jobs, they're falling upon hard times. I asked her how she doesn't just instantly go to that snap, unrighteous judgment. You know what she reminded me of? The spirit leads with compassion. It's not just a good idea to have the Holy Ghost with us always. It's so necessary. Our church leaders tell us that all the time. Remind us of that great quote from President Nelson about how we need the guiding influence of the Holy Ghost in order to survive these last days. Because think about some of the duties of the Spirit. The Spirit helps us distinguish between right and wrong. He guides us. He warns us. He comforts us and helps us to see others as God does. The Holy Ghost can help us feel love and compassion for others. And when we strive to have the Spirit with us, it is so much easier to judge righteously and to stop those poor snap judgments that we sometimes make. So what are some other ways that we could train ourselves to not just go to that quick, faulty judgment? If we strive to have the Spirit with us, what are some other things that we might do? Talk about it with your class. Some examples that I came up with were service. When we serve, we definitely have more love in our hearts and are more charitable. Prayer, pray for love, study the FSY guidebook. Know these principles and these guidelines that we should use as we make judgments. Study the life of Jesus Christ. Get to know him and his teaching and strive to be like Christ. Learn to let go, forgive. Another great thing to do is to focus on improving our own selves instead of somebody else. We don't need to tell them how to change when we can change ourselves. President Thomas S. Monson has a great story that has been turned into a video that is recommended in the Come Follow Me manual as well. It's from October 2010. It's a great modern day example of casting the beam out of our own eye before we focus on somebody else's moat in their eye. It's the looking through a dirty window example. Great time to show it here and to talk about how we need to focus on ourselves instead of other people and putting everything on them. Which leads me to point number four. We judge ourselves, don't we? <laughs> we probably judge ourselves more harshly than anybody else, right? And comparison, like Mark Twain said, is definitely the thief of joy. Men are that we might have joy. We're supposed to have joy. So we don't want to do that comparison, but we do compare our entire lives, all our faults. We know everything about ourselves, right? We compare that with everybody's highlights, right? And that was even before social media, people were doing that because we only ever see this top surface of so many people. Like we only see that person coming to church with the perfect hair and the, you know, whatever. <laughs> we often only see the surface levels of so many people. Remember, as we are on social media, there is something behind the camera, that big mess, or there are filters. <laughs> Speaking of filters, this is a great time to have some fun with filters of your own. You can have apps or you can use social media sites. So here I did three filters. So this is same me, okay? Right now as in this filter, I just took these right before the video. Here's another funny one. Okay, we have so many different filters that we can use and make ourselves look different. And that is often the case with social media. There's sometimes I see like friend suggestions and I can't even recognize the person by their photo until I look at their name because of the filters they are using. We have to remember that that's not reality. We have to remember in those TV shows and in the movies that those people aren't actually teenagers, right? <laughs> They're like 10 years older and they have grown and they have trained exclusively just for that part, just to look that specific way. They've even probably gone through surgery sometimes. Things turn out that way on TV or in a book because it is written to happen that way. It doesn't necessarily mean that's how things are going to happen in real life. We have to remember that and not compare ourselves to those alternate realities. How do we need to judge ourselves? Well, just like we talked about before, we need to do it by righteous standards and with love. And we often need to remind ourselves how God views us as divine and with great potential. How we talk to ourselves matters and it makes a difference. Yes, we are imperfect, but that does not mean we are hopeless. We have weaknesses, but that does not mean we are worthless. We have to trust God and his whole view of us. 
This is a great time to go over some affirmations. A really good place to take affirmations from is our patriarchal blessing. Go through that if you have it and highlight certain words and use them for your personal affirmations because that is God telling you exactly who you are and who you can be. That is the most important way to look at ourselves. Some examples though is you can look at things that you kind of constantly tell yourself all the time such as, oh, I am never going to get this. But instead of telling yourself that, retrain your brain every time you hear that, say, this is hard, but I can do it. And I could do it with Christ's help. As I keep practicing, I'm going to get better. Or you can simply just say, I can do this. I will get this. Other affirmations you could use is, I am a child of God. He loves me and he will help me today. I love myself. I forgive myself. That one's so important. I am not alone. Even when it feels like it, and even when I don't think anybody else understands, Jesus Christ does. I am needed and I am wanted. I am strong. I am brave. I can do hard things. Happiness is for me. Those are just a few examples and I'll put them up and you can print them out for you to use and to hang up in your classroom. How we talk to us matters and how we need to be kind in judging ourselves as well and to use righteous judgment as we judge ourselves. Point number five, we also judge the promptings that we receive. Remember we were talking about the Holy Ghost and there's two ways that we can judge our promptings. Number one is we can judge those promptings, whether they had come from God or maybe they are coming from somebody else. Elder Dale G. Renlund gave a great talk on this in General Conference October 2022, where he gave us a great framework where we can judge our promptings and our thoughts, whether they come from God or whether they come from somewhere else. Number two, we could also judge our promptings as maybe beneath us, ridiculous, too insignificant to even matter, embarrassing as something we don't want to do, and so we ignore it. We got to be careful with those kind of judgments. Of course, we don't know better than God, but often we judge our promptings thinking that we do. Here's a funny example. Years and years and years ago, I would come home from work and I would make myself popcorn. And I started to get these promptings that I shouldn't be eating the popcorn. But that was ridiculous. Why in the world would I not eat popcorn? It's a fine snack. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, popcorn is great. Why not? Sometimes I would ignore it and sometimes I would stop. And eventually it happened enough that I was like, this is ridiculous. Even if this is some ridiculous reason not to eat this popcorn, obviously I'm getting prompted to not eat it and I need to listen. <laughs> I don't care. I don't know better. I need to just listen. And long story short, it turns out that I am definitely allergic to corn and I cannot eat popcorn to this day. It makes me super sick. So popcorn, while it's not bad for everybody else, it is bad for me. I need to listen to those promptings and not think that I'm better than them. Those are some great ways that you can talk about righteous judgment and how we can learn from our Savior the best way to judge. And that it's not about people, but about the situations. Remember, at the end of your lesson, testify of the principles of the doctrines taught. Also, invite your class to act on the promptings that they have received to act. We need to have the faith to act on the things that we have been told in this lesson. Just like my popcorn example, let's act on them even when they sound ridiculous, as long as we know that they come from God. Chat with you next time. Come discover more gospel fun at cknscratch.com.